the sky or the rain as it was then but it rolls up. Start by reading a few stories. Let me read you the story of the cloak. I will be reading it as it is written in first person. The book is the first. When I was young, my family and I would go visit my grandmother every Saturday. Her name was Jared, and she was excellent. She would let me stay past my bedtime, cook me what I wanted, and bought anything I ever wanted. She would also confirm when something in my life went wrong, like my time my best friend died in a car crash when he was driving home after a party at his friend's house. I always loved to visit her. Every day, I would daydream about her next visit. That was always the case. Until that day, I discovered the truth about her. You see, there was one thing she never allowed me to do. Go into the basement. She always told me that it was dark and creepy, and that was where she kept all of her priceless possessions. As a kid, I would obey her thing that she simply didn't want me accidentally breaking any of her accessories. She would put a huge metal lock on the trap door, and I would watch her every time. I had to know what was down there, and one day, I got the chance. I was one of our family visits, as usual. Everyone had gone to get food, and I was left behind since I was in the middle of the game. I quickly paused the game and ran to the trap door. That was my chance. Luckily for me, she was the more careless type of curse. I wasn't surprised when I saw the key hanging right behind the trap door on the coat hanger, checking that the coast was clear. I quickly grabbed the key and sprinted carefully back to the trap door and inserted the key into the lock. The lock opened with a click and I took the lock out, gathering my nerves, I entered the trap door and closed the door behind me. When I turned around, I grasped in horror. I couldn't believe what I saw. There were no items or anything for that matter. The room was bathed in a blood red glow that came from several red lights on the ceiling. The only piece of furniture that I could see was a blue wooden chair in the middle of the room. My heart started beating when I saw that someone was being bound by the chair by two metal chains. As I moved closer, I could make out who it was. My mind couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was Sherry. What a story. Can you believe your mind? Go through all that. Let's see what other story.
Okay. The following was a blog post by John Goodman, posted on the 17th of August, 2011. Included with it was a download link to $1.way. The following question has been converted to OGG format so that it may be uploaded the wiki. Goodman mentioned in the post that he would be doing extensive research on the mysteries surrounding this file. If you report it anything bad, it will be posted. This will be read in first person as the other. After my computer got burned to a crisp in the lightning storm, I was left with only my old computer. Fortunately, I had everything from my destroyed computer already backed up onto USB drives and CD ROMs. Hello, Mr. Opiman 100. Welcome to this read. My old computer was running Windows 98 and desperately needed a notice upgrade. It was time to search online for a new OS install disk that was at an affordable price. You might ask, why not just get a new computer? I would have, but because of the crappy economy, I don't have money to do so. So my only other option was so great my, my old one. Anyways, I just need to get some stuff out of the way. I searched around eBay to see if anybody was selling a copy of Windows XP at an affordable price. There was no way my whole computer would be able to handle Windows Vista or 7. So I would just have to go with XP. Lo and behold, somebody was selling a full Windows XP clean install disk for only $1.45. Nobody else was bidding on it, so I placed mine. Even after I had placed my bid, nobody else did. Needless to say, I won the disk with nobody else to challenge me. A few days later, I received the disk in a wide envelope. I opened the envelope and pulled out the disk. It seemed like just like any other XP bootable disk. I turned on my old computer and popped it in and installed Windows XP as no one would normally work. While I waited for it to install, I popped some popcorn, took a ton, and watched some television, occasionally checking on the progress of the installation and responding to a dialogue box, entering the registration etc. Finally, it finished installing and I could use the computer. The red is on purpose. The first thing I did was transfer everything I had backed up from my destroyed computer to the old computer. CD after CD, USB drive after USB drive, and finally I got everything onto my computer the way I wanted it. I decided to randomly browse around the computer a while before I turn it up and get ready to bed. This random browsing led me to the C column backslash windows backslash media folder. Then I noticed a file on there called one dollar dot way. I then put the file on the computer, so I assume it was installed along with all the other files in the computer folder. But I realized I didn't remember any such file ever being included with XP when I had added it on my destroyed computer before upgrading it to Windows 7. Curious? I double clicked the file to open it. It was a very peculiar file. All I heard when I opened it was some weird static noise, almost as if it was some extremely distorted sound. The file was just four solid minutes of this weird sound. It kind of creeped me out. I mean, it was nighttime, with my sleeping dog being my only company, 
and I filed the file on my computer that I never put there, and wasn't part of the original XP installation, and all it is is 4 minutes of weird static games. Furthermore, it's in the system folder. The game might be a virus of some sort, I scanned the file. Behold! One Trojan came out. I had no clue where I would have gotten it from. I'd barely been on the internet at all since Windows XP was fully installed. Suddenly, I realized I'd seen a file with the same name flash for a split second on the screen as the disk installed all the system files. I could only one come to one conclusion. The disk had been tempered with. I decided to delete the Trojan, delete one dollar dot wave, and do a full system scan with both of my antivirus programs, our Vice Anti-Mirror and Microsoft Security Essential. It was going to take a crap lot of time to finish scanning, so I decided to go to bed on my way in. I still felt a bit mad that I went through all the time to finally get my computer set up and upgraded the way I wanted it, only to find out the dead stall list had been tempered. I woke up the next morning, ate my breakfast, took a shower, brushed my teeth, and went into the computer room. I sat down at my computer and turned on the monitor, which I had turned off last night before I went to bed. I couldn't believe what I saw. My desktop background had been changed to a picture of a dollar bill. There were two errors saying that my two antiviruses had crashed, along with a bunch of other blank air dialogues that were all titled one dollar dot wave with a single OK button. Every icon on my desktop had been replaced with the shortcut to one dollar dot wave, even the recycle bin. My start button now said one dollar dot wave and the usual flag icon was replaced with the dollar sign. When I clicked the start button or in this case, the $1.wave button. To bring up the $1.wave menu, every icon there was also replaced with $1.wave. The administrator name was changed to $1.wave. And the account picture that was of a dollar bill. I clicked Don't Send Reports to both the error saying malware buys and Microsoft Security Essential I crashed. I then click the OK button on each $1.wave error box. OK, the screen was cleared of all those windows now. I tried to reopen the, my antivirus program, but they both gave me a blank error titled $1.wave. I clicked OK on those. I went to the $1.wave menu, click shut down, but I got the familiar clunk error sound. I tried the power button. Nothing happened. Finally, I just unplugged the computer and it finally showed up. I plugged it back in, I booted in safe mode, and tried the opening antivirus programs there. But when I did, my computer made the weirdest noise ever and abruptly powered off. I tried pressing the power button, but nothing happened. It didn't even whir up. That freaking virus had completely destroyed my only remaining computer. And I hadn't even gotten it from a website or anything. It had come with my operating system. Well, that was that. I had to go get some things at the grocery store, so I left the dogs along with my dog. I had yet to earn enough money to buy myself a new computer. I do everything computer related on a friend's laptop that he generously let me borrow when I need to check my email, do something on my bank account, online, etc. I have used that same laptop to type up and publish its story to the internet, along with $1.wave, which I have gone through and manually removed the malicious coding from. After a certain crypt message I read about talking about some last evidence that will have to be destroyed 
If I share it with anybody, which you will read about in just a moment, I've decided to research it truly as I can about the mysterious one dollar that way until I have figured out the sinister mystery that surrounds it. How did I get that one dollar that way after my computer was destroyed, you ask? Well, when I got home, my dog's ears hurt up as she became growling mass menacingly. She followed the scent into the computer room. Everything seemed normal. However, when I looked where my second destroyed computer was, it wasn't there. Everything else was still there, but the computer was gone. I found a robbery, but who want an old computer that doesn't even boot up anymore? I also noticed the tempered with XP installed as that got on of eBay was missing as well. In its place was a different disk. It was a white CD ROM with something written on it in green shirt. I picked up the disk and read, This is the last remaining evidence that I know of. Keep it secret or I'll have to destroy it too. I glanced down at the table the disk had been sitting on. Where it had been was a single dollar bill. It wasn't crinkled or damaged in any way, unlike most dollar bills. It was in absolute perfect condition, as if it had just been made. I took the disc and the dollars to over to my friend's house, the one that has the laptop that I'm typing these words on. I explained how both my computers were destroyed, and he agreed to let me borrow it whenever I needed to. So, I got on the laptop, put the CD in. On the CD was just one file. One dollar dot way. Okay, let me just... Uh, let me just pause for a second. Oh my god. I do need to drink some water. Let's uh, resume in a few seconds. There we go. Everything is better now. So, this is the second post from the same author. Hey everyone, it's me again. So you all remember that one dollar dot wave crap I posted about a week ago or so, right? Well, like I said I would, I did some research on it. Simply searching $1.wave on Google yielded no results. I asked on a message board about the file, but nobody seemed to have even heard of it before. That is, until I got a reply from some guy saying he knew of the file and had bad times with it. And when asked follow, oh, don't even remind me $1.wave. It's amazing how much trouble a four-minute sound clip of heavily distorted music can cause. It was years ago. Some person on Craigslist was selling a computer with Windows XP already installed on it. At the time, Vista was still in beta and 7 didn't even exist yet. I went to her house in Cleveland to pick up the computer. I brought it on and turned it on. I noticed the wave file in the C column backslash Windows backslash media folder entitled $1.wave. Curious, I opened it and listened to it. It was nothing special, perhaps a little creepy, but it didn't interest me. I closed it and went to the bathroom. I came back to the computer and I could not believe what I saw. Everything was changed to dollars or some crap in a bunch of error title one dollar dot wave. I tried using antivirus to fix what I instantly took as a virus, but it wouldn't open. I tried to ring off the computer, but it wouldn't turn off no matter what. The only thing that worked was unplugging it. I tried to boot in safe mode and use my antivirus there. But upon trying to open it, my computer made this bizarre noise and shut up and refused to turn back on. 
I don't mean refuse to put into the OS. I mean literally just would not power on as if it wasn't plugged in. The next day, my computer was gone with just a single dollar bill in its place. I know it sounds insane and you probably won't believe me unless you had a similar experience with the file yourself. Cleveland. eBay had told me that the ATM location was in Cleveland, Ohio. I now had a new mission. Track down the person that sold me the installers. Welcome to this reading, Lisa Lisa. I replied to him saying that I had indeed had a very similar experience and requested he give me the exact address of the woman that sold him the computer as I wanted to have a little talk with her. I probably sounded like a stalk, but I didn't really give a crap. I needed to figure this out. Surprisingly, the user actually sent me the address of the woman to me in a private message. Living in Ohio myself, Cleveland was not too far away, so me and my dog went into the car and drove off. We arrived at the small yellow house that could only be the home of the woman who sold me the install disk. I walked up to the front door and rang the doorbell. A woman almost instantly answered the door. She seemed to be an elderly woman, short and stout, with white hair, tied up in a bun. Then I looked into her eyes. Oh, those eyes! They seeped through me into my soul, hungrily examining it, seeing if it was suitable to feast upon. I almost printed back to my car and drove off right then and there, but I couldn't. I had a mystery to solve. Why, hello, John Goodman, said the woman in a menacing voice that sheds shivers down my spine. My first thought, oh dear, she knows my name. Oh God, please help me. My dog growled tremblingly at the woman. It took all my courage to finally split her up. Look, I don't have time to for fooling around. What is one dollar dot wave and why did you put it in my Windows XP install disk? Oh, I can't tell you that, cackled the woman, who I now was certain was up to no good. Why not? I countered angrily. Because, said the evil woman. However, I can tell you this. Beware in the days that follow, for one dollar will hot until all is hollow. And before I could say another word, the woman shut the door on me, cackling wickedly. I had no other choice but to walk back to the car. Along the way, a man came by and asked me, What were you doing over there? I was talking to the woman that lives over in that house over there, I replied. The man's expression became concerned. Nobody has lived in that house for over ten years. I looked to the house, but instead of the bright yellow cheery house that I had seen when I arrived there, there was a crumbling, abandoned foundation with a wooden plank nailed into the front door saying, Condemned in green letters. But but I was just talking to an elderly woman that lived there a minute ago, I argued. All the colors drained from the man's face. Elderly woman? Yes, I said. You know, with her hair all tied up in a bun and whatnot. The last person who lived there was an elderly woman, always having her hair tied up in a bun. But she's dead. So I didn't actually find out much of anything new about One Dollar That Way, but apparently it was created by a ghost. Interesting, but it's no laughing matter. I realized at the moment I saw that dang woman out of the corner of my eye, giving me that freaking soul devouring stare and smiling like a maniac. When I focused on her, she disappeared. I then proceeded to sprint out of the room and hide under a blanket for the rest of the night. When I dared go back to the, to the living room, 
A dollar bill lay on the floor where the woman had been. Just one moment. It's time for good men's turn goals on one dollar that way. It's official that old dad is stalking me. Since my last post, I've been catching glimpses of her out of the corner of my eye. Always with that soul-devouring stare and demented smile. She always vanishes as soon as I focus on her. And it always has to be at night when it happens. Each time I get the heck out of there and hide under a blanket for the rest of the night, when I dare enter the room again, there's a dollar bill where the woman was. I have actually collected all of the dollar bills she's left for me beginning with the one that came with the last evidence disc into one wallet. I've gone three days straight without sleep because of this crap. In the most recent incident, she was even holding a bloody knife. That was enough encouragement for me. I packed up a few things, and me and my dog piled into the car and went to my friend's house. Unrelated. I haven't told you my dog's name yet, have I? Her name is Coco, as in chocolate Coco. Anyway, how I was saying, I told him everything that had happened. I kept it secret, because I figured if I told him, he'd think I was insane. But at this point, I really had no choice. About one dollar don't weigh, the old dad that seems to want to kill me for some reason, etc. I expect him to say I was crazy and call mental institution, but very curiously, he actually believed me. I guess he knew I wouldn't make crap like this up. So, I'm going to be staying at his place until this situation blows by. Tonight, my friend glanced out of the window, and all the color drained from his face, and Coco growled menacingly at it. I looked out the window, and I saw it. That blasted old dag. She stared into the room from outside with that soul devouring stay and that same demented smile. Then she disappeared. We didn't need any more encouragement. We pulled down those blinds and nailed boards to every window in the house, as well as the front and back doors. I don't think we'll be going outside for a while. Let me just replace a few things here. This should hopefully be better. I am dark. I am the destroyer of worlds. It is very pixelized. But that's okay. I went on my friend's laptop and checked the forum thread I had posted asking about $1.way. Someone had replied there under the username $1 and guess what their profile picture was? That cursed old hag face with her trademark soul-eating stare and demented dream. Her reply said simply, Oh, more evidence. Guess I'll have to destroy it. I clicked the reply button to respond, but it said that the trend never existed. Furthermore, when I searched the username $1, it said that no such user ever existed. Weirdest of all, her join date had been in 1928. That was nine freaking decades ago. The internet didn't even exist back then. Ooh. We're getting to the good stuff, aren't we? While on my friend's laptop, a dialog box suddenly appeared, prompting me to download $1.exe. 
knowing this could only be more of the whole bags on thing, I cancel the download. But guess what? It downloaded anyways. Ain't that just nifty? As soon as it finished downloading, it opened itself up. I prepared for the worst. Another computer destroying virus. The whole bag contained with it a computer file. It opened. It was... It was... A game. A game. Of all the wretched things one dollar dot exe could have been, it was of some PC game. It showed a generic menu screen with the buttons play, exit, and options. The background was a picture of a dollar bill. I clicked option. Just some graphic settings and such. I went back and clicked play, again, preparing myself for the worst. It gave an instruction screen on how to play. Basically, the concept was that you were a bank, bank robber, and in each level, you had to go through obstacles to get to the bank and rob it. In each bank, you'd have to be, fight a boss, and if you beat the boss, you'd get the money. So, I played the game with my friend and Coco watching anxiously. Unrelated again, my friend's name is Bill. It was your generic platform game, and I played through it quite easily. I beat three levels, and then the fourth one was the final one before I go to the first bank. I beat that level and fought the boss. The boss was some kind of banker with superpowers or something. It was a world one boss, so it was ridiculously easy to beat. I beat him by shooting him with the head with a pistol and got the money. The game counted up my score and so forth before taking me to the first level of World 2. I figured I had played enough, so I tried to exit the window, but clicking the X only greeted me with the window's error sound. It wanted me to keep playing, and judging by the, all the weird crap that had happened to me recently, the reasons couldn't be good. So I tried ending the application process with Task Manager, but the end process button only gave me the error sound again. I tried shutting down, but the shutdown button gave me the same result. It was very similar to when the one dollar dot wave had first destroyed my old computer. Because the laptop was running on a battery, I had to take the battery to shut it off. I put the battery back in, rebooted, and everything was normal again. I deleted $1.8c. It didn't come back like $1.8way again. It stayed deleted. It's time for the seventh bullet. More corner of my eyes sighting of the old ad. In hell of them, she's holding a bloody knife. Boarding up her windows and door doesn't seem to help. She's still going to the house. Today, we unboarded the front door to go and get the Sunday paper, even if we're hiding from a sadistic ghost woman who wants to kill us. We still gotta keep up on the news, right? It said that a banker had been found dead at the local bank with a bullet wound in his forehead. It showed a picture of the man and to our, and to our horror, it, he looks exactly like the World 1 boss from $1.98C. The way in which I had defeated him had even been a pistol to the head, and the paper said there was a bullet wound in his head. As I read the paper, I saw the whole bag again out in the corner of my eye holding a dead corpse under her arm that looked just like the banker. This time, I didn't focus on her. I focused on the paper. <laughs> to see what would happen if I didn't make her disappear. If she tried to kill me or anything, I'd just look at her. She just kept standing there with that demented smile and soul-eating stare. After a few moments, a smile began to fade and turn into a frown. 
I think he was disappointed that I didn't seem to notice her. I looked to Bill and surprisingly he had followed suit. Even Coco was pretending not to notice the egg. I turned back to the paper so I could continue seeing the egg out of the corner of my eye. It wasn't easy trying not to see something yet see at the same time. I kept wanting to look, but I knew that if I focused on her, she would disappear. I wanted to know what would happen if that did happen. Her disappointed expression then turned into a fierce and angry look. She raised her knife and lunged at me. In unison, me, Bill and Coco all whirled around to face the ghost. She stopped abruptly just as she was about to reach us, then vanished. This raised another question. If she wanted to kill us so badly, why didn't she just do it and get it over with instead of taunting us like this? Maybe she doesn't want to kill us. Maybe she just wants us to think she wants to kill us, make us paranoid to the point of insanity just for her own sadistic pleasure and amusement, sure wouldn't surprise me. I woke up this morning from the little sleep that I actually got. I opened my eyes, expecting to see the ceiling above me, but then I froze. Standing above me, looking down into my eyes with her soul-devouring staring, her an insane smile, what the, was the habit? For several seconds, there was silence. I said nothing, for I was too afraid. I didn't move. I didn't even breathe. My heart threatened to burst. If it was pounding so hard, then finally, the hag broke the silence. Good morning, John, she said menacingly. It took all of my courage to respond. Just tell me what you want and I'll give it to you. Just leave me alone, I replied. It's just so sad when you have to live under a curse, the curse of my own creation. First to pass on the curse to others, the curse of one dollar of green. I never asked for this, but having it shown downright true so much, I've come to enjoy it. I'm not sure if it's my sanity that has been pushing by this or what, but it comforts me to know others are feeling the same pain as me. Enough of your cryptic crap, I yell, and then suddenly Coco jumped out of nowhere and tackled the hag to the ground, drawing furiously as I welcomed Tango straight to the stream. The hag just smiled. Go ahead, do it! Bring me to bloody shred! It might just be the only hope of destroying this horrid curse once and for all. The suffering will be gone. Everyone who has ever fallen victim to great villainy. Before another word could be said, Coco began tearing that woman to bloody shred. I never knew my dog could be so violent, but I didn't care. If it meant the end of this terror that bloomed over us, it was worth it. Me and Bill, who had been woken up by all the commotion, could only watch as the hag was torn apart. She didn't even scream. In fact, she smiled as if saying, thank God it's finally over. And then it was done. Her body was mangled and ripped so badly you couldn't even recognize her. Blood was splattered everywhere. Then the body or the pieces of it, anyway, begin to shimmer and fade away, and then they were gone. No trace of them remained, as if nothing had happened. Then we noticed a note laying on the floor where the hag had been. Bill picked it up and read it out. Destroy the dollars, destroy the discs. Do it before the remnants of the curse that lie within them enslave you as it enslaved me. I instantly knew what I had to do. I found the wallet 
that I used to keep all the dollars the hag had left me, and I lit a match to it. A blood-curdling scream of pain sounded from it, and almost made me jump out to my skin. I threw it outside, and it burned until it was but ashen's dust. Then I found the disc containing one dollar that way. I threw it to the ground and stomped on it. Another blood-curling scream, and the disc spontaneously burst into flame. Now that is what I call burning a CD room. It burned until it was nothing but a bunch of melted plastic. I had to use a shovel to scrape it off the ground and chuck it outside. For the rest of the day, nothing else happened. The hag never came back. Nothing. I think at long last, this nightmare may be over. But I won't make assumptions too quickly. I'll wait a while, see if anything else comes up. If nothing else does, I guess it's safe to assume the hunting on the one dollar that way has ended. Oh boy. And this is the final. Well, I think I've waited long enough without anything happening, so I can safely assume this is all over. Me and Coco have moved back into our own house. Things seem to be returning to normal. And after some thinking, I've come up with an hypothesis as to what all that crap was about. I think the hag was forced by a curse to do terrible things. And the curse was like a virus, using her to spread to others. I guess one dollar that way, and all associated things are all duplicates of this virus. I can only assume its proper name is Greed, since that's what the hag kept referring to it as. How Greed came to be, or what its purpose was, I can only wonder. But the hag seemed to hint that it was she who created it, and it was a screw-up that she made that caused all of this. I guess those dollars, the disc, and the hag were the last remnants of greed, and by destroying it, I destroyed greed forever. She was so anxious to get her hands on evidence and destroy it, because she wanted to destroy the curse of greed. I don't know whether any of these guesses are even remotely correct, but I don't really care. As long as this nightmare is over, I'm confident with not knowing. And I'm damn certain it's finally over. You think so, huh? Alright, let's take a quick break. Oh my god. Ugh. Hello, Eisen. Hello, everyone who came around. Ugh. Just need to take a few sip of water and then we'll move on to a different story. Thank you, Eisen, for the bits. Very appreciate it. And now... It's time to go again. How inappropriate, Opai, but thank you for the bits. Let us see what else we can get. Alright. This might be one of those stories that is well known, but I think it's fair to do a retelling of it, so let's do this. The story is called, I Hate You. 
This isn't one of those haunted game stories. At no point are you going to hear me claim something when the game spoke to me, reacted to my words, or forced me to punch myself repeatedly in the face. No, this isn't about a haunted game, or a game doing something impossible, or even something it should have. This isn't about a glitch or a hidden satanic message and at no time did I phone Nintendo in corner only to have my question answered with hushed whisper and anguished screams. This story is about a game feature I don't think anyone else has unlocked. That's it. No ghosts, no conspiracies, just a secret we were all supposed to find but never did. Something that changes an entire generation's childhood and the very essence of multi-million, billion dollar franchise. This is about what I assume to be a previously undiscovered alternate ending of Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. In 1996, I received my first computer as a birthday gift. It had been before the internet had used computers before, but it had always been in school or at a friend's house. This one was mine. All mine. I explored the crude, prehistoric web of the time with great interest. I downloaded all sorts of pornography and even printed it out, which made absolutely no sense. I also pirated media like a madman. Music. Games. Anything. This was where I first discovered Mario World. I never had the Super Nintendo as a little kid, so it was all new to me. I downloaded tons of games along with Snap Simulator, but Mario World was my favorite. For over a decade, the same Mario World run was my time-wasting hobby. I played it over and over again, beating the game faster and faster until until I began to lazily explore the worlds with no particular purpose. Game Genie Co. has helped immensely. I could turn off the timer and relive a particularly entertaining map for an hour as I waited for download or any number of boring events. It was in this manner that I must have beaten and re-beaten the game thousands upon thousands of times. There was comfort in the obsessive, compulsive behavior of this routine, but all of that was shattered when I saw the blind boo. The blind boo, as I referred to it, was hovering over the exit from the haunted sunken ship level later on in the game. I called it blind because it actually had no visible eye. It was like someone had made a lazy ramen, but I knew from years upon years of experience that this was a normal game. The blind boot just hung out there over the exit pipe, blocking it. I turned my back to it, but it didn't chase me. How could it? It didn't even see me. Then I noticed something else out of sight. Let me see if I can actually pull it off right now. This is what was seen. There was a key and a keyhole misplaced above the exit. Keys and keyholes are such as such are ways of ending a level in an alternate manner and discovering a secret area. Still, 
this didn't belong there and I knew it. For a moment, I considered the fact I'd actually broken a ROM file from overuse. After taking a screenshot specifically to show to all of you Mario Brothers fans out there, I picked up the key and opened the door, figuring the game would seize up and I'd have to restore it. Instead, it opened up a new path on the map selection screen. Let us show this once again. This is the path that has opened. A whirlpool next to Bowser's already creepy head game thing had pressed the right arrow and moved onto the whirling drain. And there was yet another new thing that popped up. This is what happened. Oh God, no! Thank you very much, Mr. Ryzen, for the bits. Oh God, no! This didn't really strike me as hard, because if you're familiar with the Mario World game, there is an area called Star Road that you may know as similar names, just stuff like tubular and awesome and all manners of dumb words and phrases. Most of the areas were called Vanilla Forest and Donut Mountain 3 and all that, but there were not with other names like that. What did concern me, though, was Mario's expression. Surprise? Shock? Fear, I entered the map. And was greeted by this. Oddly enough, the whirlpool in the middle of a lake began with the standard castle entry animation, Mario walked up to a castle door, looked up, then went in. Welcome to this reading, I chin. I could tell it was underwater, though, because of the bubble that periodically emerged from the sprites wild and floated up to the top of the screen. Inside the castle, I started to, it started to look more and more like it wasn't, I was in fact experiencing a glitch. There was no room to jump, no room to do anything but run left and right. I must have gone right for 10 to 20 minutes just holding the B button and running around at full speed. After a while, I ran into one or two blind boos in the darkness above, then three or four. Then the screen was full of them. They just kind of hung there, doing nothing. They wouldn't chase me if I turned my back, as with the previous blind boo. If I made any noise, like Mario's jump sound, for example, they would just kind of shudder a bit, like they heard the sound of Mario's movement, 
but couldn't do anything about it. Then something made me stop and turn the other way around. Now I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that this map was designed specifically to screw the player. Not because of the giant bleeding bill was emerging from it profusely from its face, but because it was inescapable. There was literally no way to avoid being killed by it, as you can clearly see above. That is, unless you're like me, and you have Game Genie cheats on him. I switched it on the color for permanent invincibility. I let the bleeding bill chase me for a while while I was invincible. Just to get a good look at the thing, I stopped and killed it with my invulnerable touch. Only when I saw the message that I am in there when I passed it before. I hate you. That kind of creeped me out. But on the other end, it was kind of interesting because it meant that this was definitely a map that was supposed to exist. There was some sort of plot element here, something undiscovered. What did it mean? Who hated me? Can Koopa sing the obvious answer? Or maybe just a ghost, when you're in a haunted castle that you found on the way of an haunted ship. A bloody looking hate message isn't so unbelievable. I saw it again as I approached the giant booze. I was thankful that the blind booze ended at this point, because the more I watched them shudder, the uneasier I felt almost empathetic up towards them. The thankfulness ended when I turned my back on the giant boots. Then this happened. Giant boots with faces I hadn't seen before. They always looked mad at being awakened, angry that you were invading their haunted house across the Ari Worldwide. This was different, and they look gleefully demented, just like a demented moose. I could see right down their throats, which seemed odd, given the lack of meat though. Their mouths usually displayed. And yes, of course, I will address what a message you saw in the picture. Why won't she die? I don't know why. Am I supposed to? Who's asking? I let the giant booze touch me. And they died like the bleeding bells of which I had encountered two. Despite any attempt to scare the player, I knew that being invincible meant invincible. No matter what they try. After a while, Running down this strange claustrophobic corridor with no more eventful happenings, I came to a room with an exit pipe. Taking the pipe downward, I came out the other end and dropped into a room with water. The water made sense, this being a sunken castle beneath a whirlpool and all. I was rewarded for my trouble with a question mark log that relays a mission for me. I could have easily done this with a cheat code, but the thought had escaped me and I faced all these new and strange sights. The first creature I encountered in the underwater portion of the castle were twumps. Unless you've been living under a rock since the mid-80s, you know twumps are stone-like square creatures that hang from the ceiling and fall whenever you come there. They try to crush you, essentially. Well, these twelves lined up in a tight row, dropped repeatedly 
and randomly, with no real trigger or any sense of logic. They would just wait or drop whenever they seem to feel like it. It also looks like these prompts have been very successful prompts. More cartoony blood. This was getting pretty unusual for the Mario Brothers franchise, which I haven't recall seeing blood in at all. Now, I've seen it used three times. The bloody bills, the message, and these perpetual smashing grinding clubs were both working their victims into pulp. In the anchoring effects of the water, I walked slowly under these things, making sure every single one touched me and died. There were almost 30 of them in a row. The sight of them mindlessly crushing over and over again just made me hate them with their unsettling intensity. What's weird is that the blood caused Mario to slide as if he were on an ice level. After walking through that gauntlet of depravity, I swam into a more open area and was filled with spikes on the floor and ceiling. It was difficult to swim in this manner without touching the spikes, but since it was, I was still invincible, I didn't think much of it. I avoided it more for fun then out of any sense, I'd be damaged. It stopped being fun really fast, though. Now I knew what, some of what was going on. The bloody mess where the twomp were unendingly splattering? It was other Mario's. Past Mario's that had tried to travel this level. Film. I had to admit this was an excellent touch, even if it was a bit ghoulish. Whoever had designed the map actually broke the fourth wall and showed you the bulk land, motionless abortion of the player's own carelessness treatment of Mario's tiny lives. The bodies only float straight up and down a tiny bit as if to show the effects of the light current. It was genius, and I couldn't believe I might be the first and only person to see this. I toyed with the idea of thinking, thinking more than one screenshot I just presented to you, basically so all of you reading this could enjoy the secret match as, up as I had, especially with this weird little touch. But, without swimming, Without kicking or moving in any way, the dead Mario started to come at me like torpedo. Their faces remained blank and blue and dead, but they moved with astounding speed. They angle and position and were all sorts of unique trajectories that left me almost nowhere to move. They continued coming at me swarming and backing up to try again and I just couldn't bring myself to let them touch me. I moved with more speed and skill than I ever exerted, frantically trying to get Mario free of the drowning victims that seemed dead set on rocketing straight into it. When I finally reached the purple exit pipe, you saw there had to be 10 of those things right behind, pitching, turning, and chasing me. I entered the pipe as fast as I could, thankful that it worked properly, and then Mario out of that situation in a heartbeat. The corridor that followed was empty. Thankfully, it was just a blue underwater always of sort, with nothing to avoid or kill. It was boring and predictable, 
like the game had been all these years, which brought back a sense of safety. At the end of the hallway, I came to the standard pair of doors you'd enter to face a final boss. Inside the doorway, a mushroom power block. I didn't touch that shit. Going through the door, as you'd expect. The typical change of map views occurred, and Mario was standing on the ubiquitous bridge of boiling lava. Or had it been blood all along? When Mario walked onto the bridge, however, there was no boss creature. Instead, Mario immediately looked from the side to side and froze. I couldn't control him anymore. He just stood there. Keep looking at it until you see it. I didn't even see it at first, so I don't expect you to notice right away. If you still haven't spotted the thing, look into the third window from the left. For your information, that's not usually there. Mario seemed to regain his composure and looked back and forth slowly, surveilling the room. There was still no boss, and I still couldn't control it, so I stopped trying and just watched. This went on and on for what seemed like forever. Nothing happened. Then a familiar face walked in from the right, dressed in green, tall and angry. It was Luigi. Mario recoiled in horror. It's difficult to say that without thinking how crazy it sounds, but Mario really reeled back with a sense of terror that was uncharacteristic for such a peppy happy go lucky mascot like him. Then, Luigi spoke. You thought Copa worked alone? It was all connecting now. The message scrolled on the wall. I hate you. And why won't you die? Luigi. It's always been Mario's second banana. The player too. The one who doesn't get the princess in these early games. No matter how identical he is to Mario in skill set and ability and tenaciousness and bravery, at the end of the day, the game is Super Mario Brothers and he's just the brother. How oh, he must have hated Mario. Who among us wouldn't? Think about it. No matter what happens, Mario always comes back. No matter how many corpses he leaves littering the battlefield, he's always there once more to lead and cheer and get all the adoration. And Koopa didn't work alone? I didn't know what he meant at first. If anything, but again, you just have to think through. How exactly does King Koopa consistently succeed in kidnapping the princess? From day one, from the original Mario Brothers on the water, it had always been an inside job. Still unable to control the character. I watched Mario simply cower in fear as Luigi leapt into the air as high as he could in Mario 2, the bastard child of the franchise. He jumped on the pathetic, weeping Mario again and again and again. I was powerless to stop it. When he was done, he seemed to look at Mario's limp body with this overwhelming rage. Then the bridge 
started to disappear. Soon, Mario would be dead. I had, as I looked on, I had an irrational thought. Would it be permanent? Within an instant, as Luigi turned to seemingly strike a victory pose like he'd beaten the level, Mario awkwardly got to his feet and took him by surprise. Fear and sadness and confusion had given way to anger, and Mario overpowered his brother with no effort. To this day, I'm still haunted by the final result of this dreadful reprisal. There was the map style. None of this was a glitch. None of it was a mistake. It wasn't a developer getting back at Nintendo, and it wasn't a ghost. Hunting a Nintendo cartridge. It was a plan per, per, per part of the Mario Brothers mythos. If you beat the same level X number of times, a secret path of the world open, and you learn that from Mario Brothers to Mario Land. Luigi had secretly been working against you and was in fact facilitating a repeated abduction and abuse of the princess. But why? Money? Power? No. It was all there. Because he couldn't take not being the one in the spotlight. Not being Mario himself. And Luigi died. Well and truly died. Mario just sat on the edge of the bridge and wept. I was forced to watch this for minutes on end before the screen faded to black. I played the rest of the game though just to see if anything else changed. Nothing else had happened, as one would expect, since the whole ordeal was just supposed to be part of the actual full story. I couldn't exit the whirlpool again. I'd seen the events once, and that was all I was apparently allowed. It was back to the game as usual, the same exact game I played since the 90s, and probably would play for the rest of my day. Well, it was the same, except for the final image. What that well time gong actually the story just ended. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god.
Yeah, exactly perfect timing, actually. Oh boy. Ugh. Oh boy. Alright. I think we can do at least one more. Let me see if I can find anything else. In the meantime, uh, since I haven't really had time to really speak to everyone that's here, how is everyone doing on this fine evening? Might as well do that while we look for the, uh, the next story we're gonna do. <sighs> really, Zaichun? We don't need that. Unless, unless I actually suppose I could do a thing. Yeah. No, oh, that's not the one I want. All right. Back to this we go. Just a second, everyone. All right, since this is a shorter story. I tried, I, I wanted to watch some SpongeBob SquarePants, so I turned on my TV. I was in luck. There was an episode on right now, and it just got to the last part of the intro. I was wondering which episode it was playing, and I saw the title The Story of Squidward XXXX. The background was Squidward smiling at the screen. Although it looked more sinister than normal. The bubblies flooded the screen and the show started. Squidward was dancing in his room when Spongebob suddenly burst into the second floor window. Hi Squidward, hi Squidward, hi Squidward, hi Squidward, hi Squidward. He began to shout over and over using his goofy voice. I'm on enough, Squidward shouted. I'm taking the easy way out. Then before my very eyes, he jumped through his second floor window. The show fades to black when he goes jumping out. Then words appear on the screen. This is the story of Squidward. <laughs> and then my TV melted. was that story? <laughs> that wasn't even creepy whatsoever. 
I guess it was fitting that I put the freaking basement team from the Dual Shock version for this. Holy shit. Oh god. Oh my god. Well, I think it's gonna be appropriate to get this again. This one is called Slenderman Get a Jerk. Once upon a time, Slender Guy was very sad. His mother talked to him one day and said, Why are you sad, Slender? Said he was sad because he did not know money for gas. His mother was moved by his pitch and wanted to get him some money. She drove him to McDonald's Burger Hunt. But, Slender son, you can get some money here, okay? She said, lending Slender out of the car. He was happy and began working. He worked as a snake as he waited because he had lost some heart like some entire shit. And I would like a taco burger pizza, like I said, and Slender rang that bitch up, okay? I will get it one more night, sir, and I think pizza made. Slender made to do, and he, then he punched the guy in the nuts and stabbed him a lot until he was very killed. Oh no, don't kill me, you shall it sounding really scared. No, I need to make the pizza. Okay, Slender, I said the guy was very killed. He made the pizza, the sauce was blood, and the cheese was blood, and the toy was like the blood, and the guy it was cut off again. And Slender ate the pizza, nom nom nom, this is very good, he said me take the pizza and the guy it was new and you don't remember but it was okay. Thank you, I sent for the map. For anyone interested, this is the shit I was reading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Eisen, for the bits. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. I think this will be appropriate once again. This next story is called Jojo's Casual Trip Part 2 Retard Tendency. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is the name of the story. So familiar, the evidence of my last journey, which indeed has do be chronicle as Jojo's Casual Trip. Obama said not to talk about how I saw him smoke weed. I decided I would. This is my story. So I woke up at 9,893,879,873,624 years after the events of part one which I will refer to as Phantom Kong. I cried because my good friend Taiko Marissa Lashid the fifth had been killed by Obama. I decided this is it. I will find Obama. So I decided, yeah, okay, so I will go out to fight Obama, but I'm not really enough and powerful to fight him. So I met a man named Ted Cruz, and he told me the ancient art of monkey. Monkey gives you the ability to channel your inner private and your full champ on any army that you want to do it with you. After grand dueling second of instant painful training, I finally mastered it. I was now truly monkey. And I was not out. I realized that when Taiko Maris recommended me Jojo Bizarre Adventure, it was actually a secret message because he texted me and he spelled Jojo Bizarre Adventure. 
which was the secret message saying bro, I take bro to my computer, right? Now you're all an upscale and really use website called google.com. The first thing that I found was a kid called Jojo's interesting trip to my bathroom. I decided, yeah, I would watch it, but then I fell asleep, and I woke up, I saw an horrifying picture of my computer screen. It was like joy. Obama. I told him, you weak son of a fucking R word, dumbass bit, holy fuck. Oh my god. I'm tricked by the monkey, you are not, what the fuck, that's against me. And my son said, yeah, I do. And then you have a friend, this is a friend fights, he got at McDonald's on his way to my home. I said, okay, this fight is now fair. Here, here comes the great fighter, our target scene. Like you always begin, I swing the fire so hard to destroy my house. I managed to use my monkey power to make the money made out of dirt and come and grab him. They activated the suicide mask and blew up the hand of the monkey. I said, oh, but good thing the monkey has the command. And it's let me turn that coin's ass so hard. It reverted to my own universe. I I thought the fight was over, but behind I was a time I had another agent of Obama. It was ass word. I'm just gonna show this for a few small seconds. He turned the shocking marker into my back and then my spine and I was paralyzed. And then I saw someone come down from heaven and beat his ass. Until the black came out of it, this man, this man who saved my life, this man was Gordon Ramsay. I played him back with a bottle of sheep sauce and perfectly cooked black you and me. He had, stay tuned for part three, those funny crusaders. <laughs> 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 How did I fall on two stupid stories in a row? <laughs> oh my god. I posted it in chat. <clears throat> Alright. Hopefully not something stupid this time. Have you heard about the Australian scientist and techno composer who smeared yogurt on a CD to get different sound out of a CD because of the bacteria? Have you ever wondered how to fix a movie one watches on a DVD? Trust me, you don't want to find out. And yeah, that's the whole thing. <laughs> oh my god. Let's, uh, let's see. No, not that. Quick, you don't have much time. Get to your nearest hand mirror, not the ones on your wall. They won't work. Okay, now prick your finger. 
drip three drops on the mirror in the triangle formation. Go into a room with no windows and turn off the light. Do you see me? I'm the demon in there. Don't worry, I soon won't seem this way. My mouth will be open. And you need to make an offering. Nothing too big. Just an earring or something. Apparently, the internet decided to crap out. This is pretty great. I'm glad. I'm glad the internet is crapping out. But this is fine. Now, don't be mad, but I must fight. You will start to dissolve. Don't be alarmed. The process is long, but relatively painless. I should mention that I have done this countless times. Once your old body is gone, you will materialize in my home. Once here, you will not find the door that leads outside. You will also not find me. You are welcome to anything in my home. But if you don't do this when I enter your world, you will die over and over. Your death will be your material body reassembling itself in my home over a span of years. A painful and reverse process of your initial dissolution. You will serve no purpose but to feel pain. Why am I telling you this? Because once the human race is gone, you will be my new pet. And trust me, if you don't go to my house, I will be sure to kill you slowly and painfully in your house right now. Time is of the essence, pet. Do this for me. I'm lonely. And the billions before you are reassembling and useless to me. Because they didn't need my warning. That's actually the whole story. Huh. That one was kind of genuinely creepy. <laughs> I you, Eisen, for the bits. Alright. You all pay. I am your worst nightmare. I know others claim to be, but they're wrong. When you realize I'm out there, your knees go weak. You see my name. Your mouth goes dry. You see a shadow. You know it's me. You know I'm there. Your heart races. You walk down the streets after a long day at work. It's very cold out, and everyone has already retired to their warm houses, snuggled by their loved ones. But not you. Now, you regret volunteering for overtime. You know, I'm walking behind you just far enough so I can see you, but not vice versa. I have been planning, waiting, observing. You cross the street in a feeble attempt to escape me. Wait, my internet finished dying, so let's continue. You cross the street in a feeble attempt to escape me. That won't work. And deep down inside, you know that too. You rush home, hoping that when you get inside your house, all this appear. You break out into a sprint. Feet hitting the hard pavement. I run after. Or like in a chase. 
Will I catch up? Or will you escape? You practically throw yourself against the door, breathing heavily. You fumble with the luck. You get in and slam the door so hard that the burnout light bulb in the kitchen regains power. You slump against the door, safe, safe until tomorrow. For I will get you, Mr. Mailman. I will get you. Sign dog. So all this time it was actually a dog trying to chase the mailman. It's actually pretty good. You get the... <coughs> you get the big uh, thing at the end there. All right, let's see if we can. Oh God! Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Opai, for the bit. All right, I think this is another one there. This is the story of the spooky ghost. One day I was sleeping, but then I hear something in my closet. So I opened it and a skeleton popped out and said, Ron is coming. I wonder who was coming, but then I fast go. Said then said boo, then I ate his last donut and he was real mad when I got a vacuum and sucked him in while he was getting sucked and he said, I will curse you soon. I was scared after what happened that someone came at my house and did me, they brought some green acid stuff from a hobo and when they drank it, they become it. Zombie tried to eat my brains when I got a powder knife and I tried to slash his head but it was too weak so I got a box of nail and dumped him on the floor. You don't know this is very painful to step on. I threw a brain I got from the coaster here and put it on the nail so he stepped on it and died after he died. He started bleeding hyper-realistic blood all over my carpet. I was real mad they feel that that it was it was white carpet. After that, I decided to buy a game from some creepy old dude who was selling Super Smash Brothers for the Atari. I remember this game from my childhood. I used to always play it. I asked how much it cost, and he said you can have it for free because it's haunted. I said, okay, my dog. I put in the console in my cartridge and I saw the characters in the screen and everyone was on luck. I decided to play as Mario. I decided to fight Samus from the match start and the ghost I put in back and kill Samus. When I tried fighting it, it killed me in one hit and so I said I was cheating. On the characters and the screen, Samus and Mario were crossed off. I played as everyone until they all died. I couldn't select everyone. Everyone except Luigi, I wasn't mad with the code, but everyone caught what behind me and they had every realistic plot, which is weird because the graphic couldn't be on the Atari. So I got this red call and used it in fact you had a little smash after that there was a doll of the ghost he still out to the carpet, but he was scared of me so I decided to sell it along with the doll. I went to sell the other cartridge to someone and I realized that it was Buddha and they saw and I was in the window all day. Remember the door that I had mentioned it and Buddha slapped me for eating the last door and I after that decided to sell the cartridge on eBay for $10 and the doll for $7 because I didn't want to smash or hack at it. A cartridge at all because I would have been a waste of perfectly good money. 
After I get out of the house, I can out and say your next year. I stay my time with becoming close. Ha 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 ha. Once again, for anyone curious, this was this. <laughs> Pan tried to tell scary stories. <laughs> Unfortunately, his internet kept blacking out. By the time it recovered, it was already <laughs> too late. For both of Pan's heads were chopped off by OPPAIMAN100. <laughs> Thank you, Aizen, for the bits. I don't think O5 would do that, but... <laughs> I love these freaking stories that have no coherence whatsoever. Alright. Oh my god. <laughs> I have to read this one. Oh my god. <laughs> the fucking room. <laughs> so I got the DVD of the room. And it was horrible. I saw a scene that was so scary that I had an anal probe. So the movie started off normal. I you can call it that. But when Tommy said, You're tearing me apart, Lisa. Lisa did some bad thing. She got torn by the arms in the pool. And she ripped up his arms. But I spilled everywhere. And Lisa turned into a monster. The monster she turned into was scary. It had blood coming from the mouth and had people that fell in her arms. And I picked up Tommy Mangle and Bloody with his lower body ripped up by Lisa. Who had slid in the back and there was a pick of Lisa with her hand chopped up. The end. Oh, uh, don't tell me the fucking internet died again. Fucking Christ. <laughs> this was the story. <laughs> Good lord. All right. The hell is this? <clears throat> All right, I guess it's another one of these then. It was a dark and stormy night in the town of Fairfield. Flashes of lightning struck in the ground, creating a bluish stroke across the plain to all funny movies. There was a house in the town of Fairfield, a house like a brother. It had 666 bedrooms and 1666 bedrooms. The owner of the house was a steely known and they were in play. Every night at least one child would go to her house and never come back. The town people thought you would send them to her because of the celebrity would be able to adopt them. Oh fuck, but not be stopped. The only person who might be able to stop her was the man that moved her house. It was a dark team, faith field, and he wore cuts in the end of family. Famous basketball star in their castle dealing. It's... What the fuck? <laughs> what the hell is an opera would conceive and the same pick up track almost at the same time so along with the story? I thought it wasn't the townspeople had a meeting to discuss the problem and what they're going to do about it. And then we take up the ability of populations and all pressure be killing all the options to just play funny. 
I all decided to let Dr. Oz make the decision. Dr. Oz had very hard time making the decision. I decided to go with instinct and kill. Later, the bike is stuck into one of the bedrooms, gone in hand, the slop and bottle of man soap. And soap. He walked to me, he was trying to find her own frosty pain and he spotted a purple door. Yes, and that was where she was. I closed open the door, shut the gun and ran down the house and left the house. A couple days later, he drove by our closet and he saw her outside, door doing the pants. He never asked her and looked away at Brandy. Our frogs never shot and she didn't know since the gun shot in her yeah. What else can be said? Good lord. Oh no. Oh no. I like Action 52, it's the best game ever in my opinion. After my NES broke, I bought a new one along with the new Action 52 copy. And I opened it, I saw there's a 53 game named 666. I opened it, I saw a verifying image. I continued, the horrifying image became closer and closer until Wilson came out to the screen and killed me. <laughs> uh, I'm not actually gonna pose the image in question, just go check this shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, why are there so many bad things? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not do that. I mean, I'm reading it as it's typed out, I mean... I am a big cockpit fan and me like King Someone day my friend here is a new game called Cockpit.exe I know a game with TXE on it mean that it will kill me But I am genius about video game I call my early answer They said hello puppy, what you want? I said hello Jerry Do you want to play go on TXE with my cousins to play? He said, okay, so we dive into my naming room and we play Cuphead on XP and we lost the game because it was scary. It said in the galaxy, instead of doing that, it was spooked out and the game started showing my Take the only cockpit dancing covered in blood. My sister said, Oh my god, this is so scary, Bob. Are you sure you should play the game? I said, Yeah, Terry, we will be sad, but the thing is, this is a glitchy game. So I opened the game, and nothing happened until we played Bob was bad. 
Well, actually, it's both, but you know. <laughs> it's both the reason why I did that, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there was one time a guy was a murderer. He thought to kill lots of guys, so he did. One day the man tried to kill a guy, but it wasn't a guy, he really was a monster. So the man went home and was sad by his murder. He said never kill more guys, so he didn't accept one guy. It was his girlfriend, who was not knowing about his claims. And then she was dead, so he had blood on his car. Can't you see the sea around the wife? Oh no, he might catch you. <laughs> There's a sequel, apparently. Can a guy kill so many cops? The cops heard and he got killed by the other cops. He did. He walked in mental hospital. He got scalpel and killed everyone in his way. Way. He got home, got ice pick and stabbed all the others in his family. He went to wood and killed rats. He met Slenderman and killed the killer. Also Freddy Fazbear. They killed to death. You see, don't kill them if you can. They got your scalp. And got the chocolate. He got some teeth, but not dead. The others were okay, but then I went to the museum to see George Washington play. But when they got there, they saw 666 all over the other walls. It was so scary, not cool. They were out with a giant. They stopped it 77 times. They told giant dead damn guy guy and said, Should I die? He killed a tall girl and they killed guy dead and he never killed again. Oh wait, not over. They killed one more kid, his name Bill. He dead and his other family. And he immediately killed himself all best of God or no. I mean, what do you think I was doing? Oh my god. Thank you, Anonymous, for the bits. Uh. Oh god, I forgot to put the regular voice. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. I think I'm done actually. I I've been doing this for over two hours now. Uh Alright. Uh me actually me actually try something here. Let's see. Oh great, I I hope it doesn't okay, it doesn't. Good to know. Um <laughs> All right.
All right, I started the poll. You just need to vote for it. Nobody's voting. Ah, oh, maybe it's not showing on mobile. Which would suck. I guess it's not showing on mobile because there is a poll running. And no vote wins by one vote, so I guess we're done for the night. Yeah, boy. That certainly was a thing. Alright. Well, that certainly was interesting. I'm probably not gonna be doing this again for a very long time. So... Thank you everyone for coming by. Uh, 